In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the MPS Tunematic. That is a device that I have developed with the aim of tuning a Bosch Dedectronic MPS unit uh, to a benchmark. Now, why, did, why would this be useful? Let's take a look at my spare MPS. Now, there's two things to notice about this MPS. Number one, it no longer has the rivets. So somebody has opened this unit and put it back together, maybe to repair it, but it means internal changes. The other thing is, it's missing the protective cap over the adjustment screw. Now this cap was put on by Bosch and crimped on with four metal tabs, with the idea being that it's never removed. And at some point in the history of this unit, um, somebody has removed the cap probably to move this adjustment screw, likely to mask a problem with the fuel injection system that they didn't really understand. So we don't know what the calibration is of this unit anymore. If we compare it to one that still has its cap, then you can see that it's got rivets, so it's never been opened, and it has the factory Bosch cap, which has a domed roof, it's completely intact. This has been calibrated from the factory 50 years ago, probably, and not been touched since. So, how can I get this back to the factory calibration without necessarily having another unit to compare it to? Well, that's where the tunematic comes in. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, we don't know the current tuning of this, but just to be sure, Look away if you're, you have a faint heart. I'm going to completely mess up the tuning of this unit so I don't know what it is anymore. Using a four millimeter Allen wrench. So now we don't know how this unit is set. If we put this in the in an engine now, um, it could run rich, the engine could run lean, the engine could shake quite considerably if it's unhappy. So there's no way we're going to put this back in, in an engine until we have um, recalibrated it to match a benchmark unit. Here is the uh, MPS Tunematic. This is a small circuit board that has part of um, the ECU electronics inside it. So part of the circuit from the uh, engine control unit uh, has been reproduced just enough to be able to drive an MPS. So the MPS, we've got screw terminals and then a pigtail connector connecting to the MPS. Then we have uh, 12 volts power in from regular brick connector, uh, brick power supply, and we have uh, a USB connection uh, to a PC and we have some status lights and it's a small lightweight box that's going to do all the uh, magic for us. Now what it's going to do is it is going to uh, stimulate the MPS in the same way that it's stimulated in the fuel injection system in a running car and the um, MPS is going to generate a basic uh, pulse waveform uh, for the fuel injectors. Now there are no fuel injectors, so all we're going to do is we are going to measure the width of the pulses that are uh, created by this MPS. And then we're going to compare it, the pulse widths, to pulses that were created previously with an MPS such as this that's been factory calibrated or tuned using a wideband oxygen sensor. So we have software that has a database of known, good, tuned, working MPSs, and we're gonna see what the difference is between this unit and those, and then we're gonna be able to tune this unit to match one of those. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect to the MPS Tunematic using the free Dejectronic Studio software, which is available from djetronic.org and 
The first thing that's shown to us is the profiles that we have available to us. And these are both the built-in profiles. The first one is uh, my MPS that's been tuned using a wideband O2 sensor and is currently in my car. And the other one is um, Brad Cushman's uh, original equipment, uh, sealed, riveted, intact cap. Um, because this is factory calibrated, uh, it has a little gold star uh, on the profile. So the first thing we're going to do um, is we're going to create a profile of this MPS to see how far away it is um, from these two references. And you don't have to do this when choosing it, tuning an MPS, but I think it'd be interesting to see uh, exactly how bad this is right now. So to add a profile, we're going to uh, click on the Add button. We're going to give it a name. So I'm going to call this uh, Before Tuning Spare MPS. And the calibration method, well, these are the choices. Um, we don't know what it is, or it's unknown. So we're going to choose Non or Unknown. The next screen is showing us how we connect the MPS to the Tunematic. Um, also with the bench power supply, 12 volts is available. Uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, screw terminal connector. Um, and the this is the order of the um, connections, although I believe the MPS is reversible. Uh, you can connect 15 to 7 and 7 to 15, for example. The next step is to connect uh, the MightyVac uh, or a similar tool to the MPS and to set the vacuum to zero inches of mercury. Okay, this is where we create the profile. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, we have no vacuum uh, currently uh, from the Mighty Vac. So we have done that. Now we set the vacuum using the Mighty Vac to one inch of mercury. And once we've got it to one inch, we click on that button to indicate we've done that. And now we do two inches of mercury. That's done, and now we're going to repeat this all the way up to 15 inches of mercury. Okay, one thing to note um, while we're doing this, in the status bar, uh, the tunematic is recording the current atmospheric pressure and the pulse width from the MPS. And the atmospheric pressure is important because that affects the... Um, the operation of the MPS. So we need to know what the pressure was when we made this profile so we can directly compare it to other profiles that were made at different pressures. Okay, now we have our before tuning profile. So let's see by clicking the chart icon uh, just how bad it is. So here is uh, my calibrated MPS. Uh, we have vacuum across the bottom in inches of mercury, and we have pulse width in milliseconds up the side. Let's see, here we have uh, Brad Cushman's MPS, and we see that it is pretty close. And now let's take a look at this uh, unit. Okay, so we can see that it is actually, uh, it would uh, create a lean uh, running condition if we put this into an engine. Although it doesn't seem like a much of a difference on this chart, um, this is actually quite a significant difference. So the next thing to do is we are going to uh, tune this MPS and see how close we can get it. So we have to choose which one of the two we're going to use as our benchmark. The, because this is our, this one is already in my car, we're going to use this one. So click on the tune using this profile as a reference. Again, we're shown how to connect the MPS uh, to the Tunematic. We attach the Mighty Vac, and this time we set the vacuum to five inches of mercury. Okay, with that done, click on Next. Now, it, we choose a reference, we can change it here, but we're gonna choose um, this one, which shows that it is a wideband oxygen sensor calibration. Okay, so now 
we take the uh, Allen key and we insert it into the MPS and we adjust it until the gauge shows in the green range here. So we've got red, orange, the tiny little green gauge, then orange, then red. So this will not take very much um, adjustment at all. So to go down, we're turning anti-clockwise. Uh, looks pretty good, and that was maybe a quarter of a turn at the most. Now we click on finish. So, we now should have our MPS calibrated, but we're going to create another profile um, just so we can see the effect of making that adjustment. So we will repeat the process. This time we're going to call it after tuning. It's still a spare MPS, and this time the calibration method is tunematic. Okay. Now let's see how this compares. Okay, so first of all, we're going to choose the reference that was used, which was mine. Let's try again with a different color here. Okay, now we're going to choose the after tuning version and see how close it is. Okay, so we can see that it is uh, very close at the low vacuum levels and it's slightly leaner at the high vacuum levels. And it looks like it's seven inches of mercury. It is pretty much identical. And in fact, we can see that the difference is uh, 0 0.01 of a millisecond. So this is uh, very, very close indeed. Um, each MPS is going to have a slightly different shape of its curve uh, due to uh, its mechanical construction. Uh, we have to choose uh, a single point, uh, which is 5 uh, inches of mercury, where we try and make these two curves overlap as close as possible. So we can't change the shape of the curve. All we can do is try and get them matching up uh, using the single uh, adjustment that we have. Um, at the largest difference here, we can see that it is um, about uh, 0.05 of a millisecond difference. So the next step is to give this a try in the car. I have the oxygen sensor installed into the exhaust in the car and it's connected to this uh, Spartan 3 uh, wideband uh, oxygen sensor uh, device that outputs the, um, the air fuel ratio value over a CAN bus that is connected by an interface to my laptop. The um, Spartan 3 is powered from the ground on the coil and the switch 12 volts on the blue ballast resistor. The MPS installed in the car is the one that I used as a reference. Okay, we can see that the air fuel ratio is bouncing around a little bit, but it's around 14.3 to 14.4, maybe 14.35 to 14.45. Um, so this is looking pretty good. Uh, it's where I set it when I last uh, calibrated this unit. I now have the uh, tuned MPS connected to the car. Uh, I'm not bothering to install it in the engine bay for this test. Um, so I'm ready to go and see what the air fuel ratio is uh, for this unit. So we can see that the air fuel ratio here is about 14 point it's a little bit more stable with this dish unit uh, a little bit which is a difference of 0.05 to 0.1 units of air fuel ratio which I think is pretty close thanks for watching this video I hope you found it useful and informative it shows that DJtronic MPS units can be calibrated without having a reference physically in your possession it can be done purely with software and the little box of hardware 
to perform the pulse width measurements. So this gives another option for tuning these units back to their factory settings. Thank you.